we're going to go through the Google Finance function and we'll do it in a way that's going to help you know exactly what this function can do for you. So let's just dive into the examples. So this template, it's available in the description if you want to get a copy of it to follow along. It has the four examples that we'll go through. And the first one's just the current stock price. So we'll do that one first. I have it on this blank template, well, kind of blank, so that it's easier to follow along. And we'll start with this, but first let's just talk about the structure of the function. Like any function, you're going to type the equal sign and then type the name of the function. So it's Google Finance. What it's going to do is it's going to import security data to Google Sheets, right? so into your spreadsheet, from Google Finance. So Google has a service called Google Finance, and that existed before this function came out. And what it does is it aggregates market data. Right? So you have the stock exchanges, you have mutual funds, maybe some bond funds. Those are all what I'm calling the markets in this illustration. So you start with the markets and then that data goes into Google Finance. So Google Finance aggregates that data. So at this point, it lives in Google Finance, but then this function creates a connection between Google Finance and Google Sheets. So we're not looking directly at the markets. We're looking at Google Finance's aggregation of it. We're connecting to that and the data comes in. When you look at the syntax, the Google Finance function needs the ticker symbol, and that's the only attribute that's not in brackets. So that means it's the only one that's required. All the others are optional. And if you're just looking up a stock price, the ticker symbol is all you need. So let's go over to the template that we have. And this is a Google Finance function in its most simple form. I'll double click into A8, and we've typed out the name of the function. And then F8 here is just a reference to this string, which is New York Stock Exchange General Electric. All right, so this is the ticker symbol of the stock that we want to look up. So you'll notice before the ticker symbol, we put the, an acronym that stands for the exchange that the stock is traded on. So being that specific will make sure that you don't accidentally pick up a symbol that's traded somewhere else on a different stock exchange. So this function would work if we just typed GE but you want to be careful. So there is another link in the description, and this is on Google Finance's website, of all the exchanges that you can use. So I'm in the United States. I'm most familiar with the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. So I just picked a well-known stock off the New York Stock Exchange. But you could, for example, use the Indonesia Stock Exchange. And if you did that, you would put IDX before the ticker symbol then a colon, then the ticker symbol. Let's go back. Like I said, that's all we need for this function. So we'll hit enter and it returns $80.81. But when you do this, a different point in time than I just did this, short of some big coincidence, you're going to get a different number because this is an up-to-date real-time stock price. And when I say real-time, I mean pretty real time. There is a disclaimer down at the bottom. So there's never anything written here in Google Sheets typically, but when you use Google Finance, it puts this little footer down here that says it could be delayed up to 20 minutes. And it also pretty much says, don't hold us responsible for these prices. All right, we do our best, we aggregate them, they come in, but you're responsible for, if you wanna rely on this price, uh, you gotta check to see that's right. It's your typical disclaimer. Um, but that is the current share price of GE. Now let's refresh just out of curiosity to see if it changes. It was 8081. That's still 8081. It's a blue chip. Maybe it's not all that volatile. All right, so let's go on to the second example, Google Finance. And this is looking up historical data for a stock. So when you look at the function, I'll go to Sheets Help and the reference here the section for just the syntax and how you uh, technically use the function is far larger than most functions. So it's like the size of spark lines or something because there are all these different attributes that you can pull in and they should be separated between current attributes, which is um, volume, high price, low price. You separate those from the historical data. So if you want to pull in stock price from a previous period, that puts you down in the historical data section. 
And one of the implications of that is then you're also going to need to specify a start date and maybe an end date, depending on what you're doing. So let's go back. What we decided to do here is we want the closing price in weekly intervals. So you can also specify an interval with this function. I'll double click in it, get the function help to come up, drop it down. And you can say, you can see start date, but you can also specify an end date. And if you do an end date, you can specify an interval to say, let's say you said uh, a start date and an end date that are three years apart. Well, how much data from those three years do you want? So what we did, let's hit the escape button, is we're asking for General Electric again. We're asking for the close price. There's, there's not a lot available in the historical data. If you look at it, it's almost all just different forms of price. So the open, close, high, low, volume. All right, that's not price, but you don't have historical uh, measurements like earnings per share or price to earnings. Uh, so keep that in mind. It is a little bit limited when you're going historical. Uh, but we, what we decided to do is close. So that's the closing price. And we said on December 31st, 2021, and give it to me every 14 days and make, oh, so you give it to me for a 14 day period and make the interval weekly. So that's going to be 1231, then it's going to hit in a week and it's going to hit in another week. So what this does, if we come over here and look at this, is that it returns an array, right? So there's one function here, but it's writing its data into A9 through B12. So it's returning eight cells of data from one function. Maybe that's what you want. If that's what you wanted from that, good, you're done. So let's move on to mutual fund data and we'll go back to the function help for this and just show that there are a lot of, I think more helpful attributes for mutual funds. So if you're doing something where you say, I look, I wanna, I have a, a pool of money here. I have five, 10, 15 years to invest it. So I wanna look at how it's done over the longer term. Well, if you're looking at a mutual fund, there's uh, some handy parameters here. There's some helpful parameters here, like return 260 is the total return for five years. So if you're trying to select from 10 mutual funds, you could put them all in Google Sheets, run the, re run the Google Finance function for all of them and just compare five-year returns. Okay, so when we come to mutual fund data, we've used actually that return 260, so that's 260 weeks as the attribute. So when mutual funds, we only specify two attributes because you don't need a start date or an end date for this attribute. If you look carefully again, I did prepend the ticker symbol with the exchange. So you just say MUTF if it's mutual funds. And that way you don't accidentally grab something else that has a ticker symbol VFIAX. So it's just kind of being careful. And you get 1,098%. That sounds good to me. I don't know about you. <laughs> but to really determine if it's good, you would compare it to a lot of other mutual funds that you're considering, right? And the last demonstration for Google Finance is an important thing if you're trying to build, let's say, a stock tracker or a kind of a portfolio monitoring spreadsheet. That's a great thing for a spreadsheet, right? So, but if you're using the Google Finance function, you can have a problem when it writes out an array. So if you're doing a graph, I'll link to a video where we do make one of these stock trackers on another channel that I have but you'll see that if you want to put them all together, an array of four cells for one function doesn't work very well. So if you want to trim it down in this example to just get the price, what you want to do, and I'll double click in here, is you run the Google Finance function, specify that you want the closing price, but then you wrap it in the index function. Okay, so the index function, you can tell it, do the second row and the second column, and that just returns the price. So you do get just the price if you do a current stock data, but if you're doing a historical, you have to wrap it in the index function. So let's take a look at this stock tracker that I built in this next video. I'll see you in there. Thanks for watching.